Uh, we can jump off of that one. Now, we are 30 minutes in already. That means it is time for us to jump into the NFC East draft reaction. So, our, our recap, our, you know, all these wonderful things about it. The Cowboys, the Eagles, the Redskins, the Giants. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we start the team-by-team team breakdown? Nope. You want to start with the Cowboys? I most certainly do. They didn't have a ton of draft picks, but that's okay because, man, did they get some freaking value. Their over-under for the season win total is 9.5. They needed wide receiver help. They needed quarterback help. They needed edge rusher help. And by God, did things work out. The good Lord smiled down on the great city of Dallas, Jerry Jones and his yacht on draft night. And they dropped C.D. Lamb directly in their lap at pick number 17. Not a single mock draft had this guy going any later than like the 13th pick. Absurd that you he fell that watched point. the three hours of our draft coverage. We were shocked. When this came up, I knew it was going to happen, and it made me visibly sick. Yeah, it was it was absolutely incredible. Um I was I was shocked a little bit, I I guess. I I there's no reason that this guy should have fallen. Of course, we were all really surprised that Ruggs was the first wide receiver off the board. Maybe That's we right. shouldn't have been, but that 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 threw the monkey wrench and things. And then also I just thought that I thought CD was the kind of player that player teams would trade up to go get. Yes. I, I could not believe the Falcons took A.J. Terrell right before this pick. The Falcons are not good enough. A.J. Terrell is, there's not a big board on the planet that A.J. Terrell was a better player than C.D. Lamb. And the value that you had at the 16th pick to go get a cornerback, and, st- and, and Dallas, I don't think, was going to move up to go get C.D. Lamb. No. No, Dallas but, was sitting here, and they were fine with taking the best defensive player there. Everyone assumed that they were going to take like a big time edge rusher or something of that nature, yeah. um, and, and that's that's where everyone just thought they were going to go. And I think they were happy with that, with all the projections. I think they were totally fine. Yeah, and instead, and then they realized uh, there's too much value this thing here. Has dropped in my lap. Yeah, I can't say. You just don't say nothing. Uh, so, C.D. Lamb at pick number 17, which is, again, absurd. And in the second round, they get cornerback Travon Diggs out of Alabama, who was speculated as a first-rounder, uh, graded out as a first-rounder. Just unbelievable. Third round, they get Neville Gallimore out of Oklahoma. Uh, uh, they get Reggie Robinson, cornerback out of Tulsa in round four, along with Tyler Biadads. I hope I said that right, from Wisconsin. That's just an incredible name. Uh, edge rusher Bradley Ane from Utah, who, again, that Utah defensive line was gangbusters all season long. Uh, and then they get quarterback Ben DiNucci out of James Madison in the seventh round. He's got to take a flyer on just to see what's going on. You know, if, if Dak doesn't work out in his franchise season, this it, maybe this is a guy. You never know. So, uh, I, I got to tell you, the, the first and the second round, the fact that Diggs fell all the way to 51 – that's where uh, this draft was won for them. Oh, 100%. I mean, they, their needs were wide receiver, cornerback, and edge rusher. And, I mean, they, they got all three, really. I mean, they, they got their edge rusher in the fifth round. And I think all four of the guys from Utah's defensive line last year can be competent, very uh, uh, productive NFL players. And that, that might be it. I wasn't impressed with what they did in the middle of the draft, but at the end of the day, the value you got at the the top two picks was just pretty incredible. Oh, it, you didn't screw un- it up. Yeah, it came unreal. to you. It fell to you, and and you you did the right thing. Um, but you know, after that, nothing else they did you know blew me back. I guess if you need offensive line help, I always used to have a philosophy. My uncle taught me God, years and years and years ago. If you don't know who to take. Take the best Wisconsin offensive lineman that's left on the draft. Just, just, <laughs> just draft that guy, and he's probably going to be a better pro than anybody else you could have taken. Yeah, and so, so they follow that philosophy. That's that's probably pretty good. Couldn't you know? I don't, I don't know that I'm in love with the other guys. They might pan out. They might not. The the value you got at the top is amazing. It's oh, it's one hundred percent. Let me let me tell you about Pro Football Focus here. Now, I I don't know necessarily what this says about them, um, but they. CeeDee Lamb was the sixth best prospect on their big board, and he was the third best wide receiver prospect they have ever evaluated behind only Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy. 
based on their college careers, all that kind of mess, right? Like, it, obviously, this doesn't include measurables, whatever else. It depends on what they did on film, and C.D. Lamb is the third all-time, and they got this dude at pick 17. It's insane. Man, that, that, all right. That That's ranking, what I'm saying. It, I, don't, it, I don't know what it says about, you know, pro football focus. That ranking and that stat, that, I mean, they, they prefaced it by something that doesn't sound like much, but when you think back at guys like Megatron, who yeah. played at Georgia Tech, so his college and that, film. And that's the thing. It's, we're not it's, taking his combine. We're not taking his measurables. We're not no, taking it's, any, it's we're just graded out on film. Out. Larry Fitzgerald at Pitt, like, these guys were obviously better prospects and better receiving prospects than the three guys. And then there are a hundred others that came before those guys that were far better than them. Yeah. They might not have had a better college careers, which is all they're looking at. Yeah, I mean, it's it's based on how you graded. Who um, had the best college career? Well, if you were only a one-year starter because you went to a school that had a ton of wide receiver talent or just didn't throw the football a lot, then you're not going to have the numbers or marks that he had or Judy had or Cooper had. Agreed, agreed. I mean, there are better receivers that have come out of Alabama that were far better than Cooper. Oh, far better. Well, I mean, Julio Jones. Julio, Julio is the biggest one. Julio yeah. is, is the one that, you know, did he have the college career those guys have? No, because he came on late. And yeah, well, I mean, not, not even that he came on late. He he came to Alabama at a time when they were running the football 45 times a game. Oh, well, sure. Okay, you know? you're right. The offenses were just different. Yeah. So, like, imagine know. Julio Jones with, with Tua Tonga-Valoa. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, that, or that or any of these, uh, any of the other hundred receivers that have come through. So now you're, like, taking the guy that I love and you're making me kind of shit on him because – they just compared him to the greatest receivers of all time, and he's just not going to be that. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I, I, look, I'm saying they got CeeDee Lamb, who was the sixth best prospect on their board this year. Perfect. I'm good the, with that. At the number 17 spot. Perfect. That is crazy to me. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. And then they get uh, they got Trevon Diggs at 51. Diggs was the 31st guy on their big board. I mean, that's... It, we're we're not even talking about you know the huddle report any of that the val- I mean just this is just don't screw it up I will I'll say this the Cowboys were ranked number one at the huddle report as far as value picks every single pick that they took was valued higher by the huddle report and that's only one organization but I I trust what the huddle report does I. That's that's fine. But, that's fine. I'm certain with the depth of this draft in the fourth round, there was somebody that's going to rank better than the kid from Tulsa. I don't know anything about the kid. I just know this is a really deep draft. Yeah, I mean the kid and from Tulsa, Tulsa was ranked for the defense. The kid so. from Tulsa was ranked number 96 on the big board, and he was taken at 123. Now no. at that point, in the middle of the draft, you and I have talked about this. Anywhere from like round four to about the, the, you know the, the seventh difference round between ranked number hundred and ranked number two hundred player ain't a lot. Ain't a lot. It doesn't matter. It just depends Don't take on what a long you need snapper and you're fine. <laughs> or a punter or a kicker, right? 